Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to create 2D platformer movement in Godot 4 with acceleration and deacceleration in order to make your player movement feel better. The character will gradually get to top speed and gradually stop. You can make the stop even more gradual to look like the character is on ice and having trouble stopping. I have a character body 2D with the camera 2D as a child. I'm using a cutout sprite with a skeleton 2D but you could also do this with a sprite animated from a sprite sheet. I have an animation player and some animations for it. I will add a collision shape and use capsule shape. We will add a script. In Godot 4, there is a built-in script for platformer movement. We will start off with this, since we do not want to do any more work than we have to. To go over briefly how this works, velocity is a vector 2 property in the character body. Its x stores the horizontal velocity of the character body, and its y holds the vertical velocity. If the character is not on the floor, we will fall with gravity. If we jump, we will add the velocity of the jump to y. To get the horizontal velocity, we are using user inputs for right and left. This will return a number between negative 1 for the left input and 1 for the right input, depending on which or if both are pressed. If both are pressed, you will get 0 and they will cancel each other out. If direction will return if direction is not 0. If direction is not 0, we will multiply the speed by the direction, which will give a negative value moving the character to the left if the left button is held down, and a positive value if the right button is pressed, moving the character to the right. Move and slide will move the character using the velocity property. We can change the values of speed and jump velocity to get the speed and jump height we want. We'll run this in the test scene with a floor shape with a static body and a rectangular collider shape. We'll start by adding custom inputs to use in the script. We'll make actions for left, right, and jump, and assign buttons to them, and change the script to use these. Next we will get the character to face the direction we are moving. I am using a cutout sprite animated with a skeleton, and have the cutout images and skeleton children of a node 2D named Part Skeleton Container. So under if direction I will put if direction is greater than zero, part skeleton container dot scale dot x equals one. And else part skeleton container dot scale dot x equals negative one. This will flip the character if direction is less than zero, and we are going left. When using scale, all the children of the node will be flipped as well, which is what we want. Do not flip the character body itself though, or you will get this. Now the character faces the direction we press. So if you have a sprite with multiple parts, put them under a node 2D and flip that. Next we will add the animations. We will create a variable is jumping and a function to set it to false. We'll go to the jump animation Add a call method track.
and add a key to call this function at the end of the animation. We'll set is jumping to true when the jump button is pressed and play the jump animation. Under if not is on floor, we'll add if not is jumping and play the fall animation. Then under if direction, we will play walk, if not jumping and is on floor. And under else, play idle, if not jumping and is on floor. Now for the acceleration and deacceleration. We will use lerp. Lerp takes three values. The first value that we are moving from, the second value that we are moving to, and a weight between zero and one. A lower rate will be a slower speeding up or slowing down. So we'll comment this out and add velocity.x equals lerp velocity.x Direction times speed, 0 0.2. We'll also comment this part out and put velocity.x equals lerp velocity.x 0 0.0.2. Now 0 .0 .2. when we run, we have a gradual speeding up and slowing down. We could make it more dramatic for an icy floor. You probably see that we commented out a move toward down here. So you may be wondering what is that and how is it different from lerp? With move toward, the value changes by the same amount every frame. The third parameter is the value by which the value will be changed. In LERP, the third parameter is a weight between 0 and 1. The weight is a percentage, and LERP smooths between the two values by this percentage. LERP 0, 1, 0.5 will give you 0.5, because that value is 50% between the values. LERP 0, 1, 0.2 would return 0.2, because that is 20% between the values. LERP 0, 1, 1 would return 1, because that is 100% between the two values. So since we are changing velocity.x with this statement each frame, we will gradually approach the second value by reducing or increasing by the percentage between the values each frame. The slowing down with move toward is very even, and faster at first with lerp. To see how this works, we will add a print statement and change the rate to something low to really see the difference. With move toward, we are slowing down at a very even pace. Now we'll comment that one out and uncomment the other. As you can see, it's more uneven, and you're changing faster at first. So you could use either, but they will look slightly different. Also, one thing that we really need to do with movement is multiply the movement by delta so that the movement speed looks the same on all computers, regardless of the speed of the computer. Delta is the time between frames. The default script multiplies only gravity by delta, not the rest. So we will add times delta 
to where we figure movement speed and jumps. Multiplying by delta makes the movement much slower with these values. So he isn't jumping at all anymore. We will have to raise the values by quite a bit to get them working while multiplying by delta. So now we have a character controller with acceleration and deacceleration. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to see how I set up skeletal animation of this character, you can see that in this video. Thank you.